can we melt disc brakes? We're at the top of a savage 12 kilometer mountain that averages over 10% in a bid to find out. We're armed with the latest hydraulic disc brakes from Campagnolo and a 20 kilogram weighted vest. Let's do this. There's a lot of heat coming out there. Our test is a simple one. We're gonna ride down this beautiful climb, which happens to be the Paso Jao in the Dolomites, a regular feature of the Giro d'Italia. And we're gonna drag just the front brake on the bike. The reason for this is it will put more pressure on that front brake and build up more temperature. And it means that should it fail, we've got a safety mechanism built in the rear brake. So what's the point to dragging the brakes and trying to melt them? Well, this isn't good braking technique. Ideally, you brake into a corner and then also trail brake in the corner if required. Then once you're out of it, you release the brakes on the straights. This allows you to go faster and allows your brakes to cool down. However, it is important that brakes can survive more than that because some riders, often those less experienced, can get scared on descents like this and then drag the brakes. Full transparency here, we approached Campagnolo, the world's oldest manufacturer of group sets, and asked them if we could try and melt their hydraulic brakes. They were so confident in their product that they said, well, they jumped at the opportunity and very kindly lent us this rather exquisite Pinarello Dogma F, equipped with the latest and greatest top of the range Campagnolo Super Record EPS group set and crucially, hydraulic disc brakes. Unfortunately though, it's not in my size. Devastated, but it is perfect for Hank. There you go. What? On to test one. It's a simple one. Our intrepid test dummy, Hank, is going to ride down the Paso Jao, dragging his front brake. Anyway, when we get to the bottom of the climb, if the front brake's still intact, well, I've got my trusty sidearm. <laughs> to measure the temperature of the brake, it's a thermal IR gun. Ollie, you are ridiculous. You're such a loser. Right, let's get started because that is outrageous. Right, cool Put then. Put it back in the holster, you horrible yep. man. Uh, Hank, before we go any further, do you mind just um, trying this? What is it? Uh, don't worry about it. No, seriously, what is all this tiny, tiny small print? Uh, Can't even read it. That. fine. Uh, just sign it. Yeah. Really? Cool, right, good to go. Nice. Right, here we go. Now I'm riding European brakes, so my front brake is on my left hand and I've got my support vehicle behind. 14 kilometers of descending. Here we go. Still holding in there, it's still got some good bite. So how do brakes work? Well, it's not magic. It's physics. See, as your brake rotor and your wheel is in motion, they have kinetic energy. The caliper applies friction to the rotor and in doing so converts that kinetic energy into another form, mainly heat energy and maybe a little bit of noise if they start to squeal as well. And therefore braking is well all about dissipating that heat. My wrist is going to be sore after this, I reckon. <laughs> I've got cramp in my forearm. Sixteen minutes to descend. Right, let's pull over. Right, Ollie. Right. Quick draw. Get the quick draw out. Oh, 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 that is warm. 130 degrees, 130 degrees. There is quite a bit of scorching on the rotor. You can also see a fair amount of brake dust come off that just one run. 
from him dragging the brakes the whole way. You can see it on the caliper there. And Test one was oh, something of an anti-climax. So we're going to up the ante. We're going to make Hank weigh considerably more and give him the weighted vest and maybe a few other things as well to really see if we can, well, melt this, uh, this rotor. Uh, but before we do, I think we should have a look at what's going on here. So brakes and disc brakes, they're all about heat dissipation. And to that end, that's why the rotor is designed to have as much surface area as possible with all these little slots cut into it uh, to vent it and just help create more surface area to dissipate that heat to the air. You've also got these rivets on the rotor where they connect to the central spider. Having more of those is also gonna aid with that heat dissipation so that it's not all going into the caliper. And then once we're in the caliper itself, well, it's quite interesting. There's some design features that have come from sort of automotive car tech. So you've got this shim that's between the brake pads and, and the piston. That is something to come directly from cars. And then inside here, rather than having dot fluid, which is found in most cars, we've got a proprietary min mineral oil. The nice thing about that is it's not held to any standard like dot fluid is. So well, Campagnolo is free to use its own sort of custom uh, composition of that mineral oil to make the performance optimal for, for its hydraulic disc brakes. Another interesting thing was that Hank was just saying on that test that the brakes weren't squealing and making a huge amount of noise. And well, a couple of reasons that are going to help with that are the Campagnolo pads are actually oval rather than rectangular uh, brake pads, and apparently that helps reduce the noise. Also, they're organic pads, not uh, steel pads. Steel pads, they last longer, but they are noisier. Whereas, yeah, for pure kind of performance and quietness, organic's what you want. Right, on to test two. You all right? <sighs> Made it. Just about, it took me a while to get up. Yeah. Yeah. Test two, we're up in the ante. How much do you weigh? 73 kilograms. So we need to put the brakes under more pressure. Here is a 20 kilogram weighted vest to get that on. Oh my gosh. This is a lot heavier than it looks. Yes. Oh, well, now I know how my dad feels. Also, we need a bit heavier still. So uh, here's some local delicacies. Couldn't get any pizza. There's some focaccia, eat that. Eat it? Yeah, eat it. Yeah. I'll just carry it. Eat it. Eat it. And um, I've got your board. cherry tart what, as well. well. Yeah. Eat that as well? Yeah, just smash it. That's just ex extra weight. Okay. I'll While you do that, I'll practice my quick draw. That for catcher, mm. that's 23 degrees, that is. No, Celsius. Right, we're off for the second test. Now this time I weigh 94 kilograms. And I've also eaten a lot of tart and focaccia. So I'm a little bit heavier. So what is gonna happen with these discs? Is it gonna survive the extra weight and the extra pressure put on these brakes? or the front brakes, I say. Right, here we go. So I've, did, I've been descending for over five minutes now, and there's currently no change in my braking ability. There's no noise, there's nothing. It still bites, I'm still confident in it. Let's see how it lasts for the next 10 minutes. But what would happen if you dragged the brakes like this on rim brakes? Well, on carbon clinchers, you typically get brake fade much sooner. And in the case of some rims, it is possible for delamination to occur, especially when combined with heavier riders. Plus, the braking of carbon rims in the wet is vastly inferior to discs. Alloy rims fare better, but lack the outright stopping power of discs and are typically heavier and less aerodynamic than carbon rims. All right, let's test it. Let's test it. 
or it's, it's changed color. The disc has definitely changed. There's a lot of heat coming out there. Oh, 160 degrees, 180, 180, 180 degrees. Water. Oh, I mean, look at the color of that disc now. Mate, how's that? It's tough. I'm not gonna lie. It's. Uh... Why did you lie about it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Um, but with the heavy vest on and the extra few kilos you gave me through the tart, it's definitely well made the brakes work a lot harder. You can just see from the uh, the brake dust on the fork. It's ridiculous. And the different color. Compared to the back one, which, isn't, which hasn't one. been used. So it just shows, I mean, with an extra 25 kilos, the bike has, you know, in the, the front brake has had to work a lot harder. Did, did you experience any fade? A little bit. There was one corner where I overshot it a little bit and I just couldn't get enough brake on. But that was the only bit and that was the, what, one corner out of 20? Yeah. So um, um, I just want to see if it's still true, the rotor, because sometimes they warp when they get really hot. So I just want to see what... It's still centered. You can see it's... It's not, it's not warped, which is nice. I just want to apologize to everyone, because I, yeah. I, when I planned this, in my imagination, they were going to melt. They were going to glow red like Formula One brakes in a nighttime Grand Prix. And even when we were in the tunnel, they weren't... They weren't glowing. I'm a bit, I'm a bit disappointed. No, I've got to say though, that's testament to the quality of the disc brakes nowadays. And uh, well, you're not going to chuck more abuse at it than we have. We've done two massive long descents, dragging the whole brake. Let us know in the comments below what you thought, and well, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Um, do you going to make me ride up again? Uh, I'll give you a lift. Oh, thanks, mate. Appreciate that. Yeah. Right. Oh, stop with that bloody pistol, you weirdo. You're weird. <laughs> I don't even want to go in the car with you. <laughs>